Good morning, students. In continuation with the lesson Asia, we are going to learn the second part of the continent. And the second part includes the physical features of Asia. And in this physical feature, we are going to learn the northern lowlands, the central mountain of Asia, the plateaus of the south, the fertile alluvial plains, and the island groups of eastern and southeastern Asia. So these are the five zones of physical features which we are going to learn today of Asia. So let us move. Now as far as the northern lowlands of Asia are concerned, it extends from the Ural Mountains in the west to the eastern, northeastern part of Russia. It extends in a triangular shape. If you look at it, you will find that it is extending in a triangular shape from the Ural Mountains to the river Lena over here in the east. Now the northern lowlands is a region of floodplains, swamps and marshes. Now it is mainly because the mouths of these rivers remain frozen because they lie at a higher latitude. However, their sources are in the lower latitudes. So there is a continuous flow of water in the rivers, but due to poor drainage, the water is not channelized into the Arctic Ocean, mainly because of the mouths of the river remains frozen. As a result, all these areas have a lot of marshes and swamps in the upper courses. So here you can see that due to the rivers which are not able to empty itself into the Arctic Ocean, marshes like this get developed in the northern part of Asia. Now between the river Yenisei and river Lena, there is an old eroded plateau which is known as the Central Siberian Plateau. The plateau is bounded in the east by a number of mountains, which includes the Altai, it's over here, it's not named, but it is over here, the Cyan Mountains, the Yablonovi, the Stanovoy, and the Verkoyansk Range. Lake Baikal. Over here you can see it. Now this is the deepest lake in the world. And it lies between the Cyan and the Yablonovi range. This Lake Baikal contains nearly 20% of the fresh water which is present in the world because it is a very deep and elongated lake.
to the south of this west siberian plain we have the turan plain now this is a region of inland drainage the amur darya and the sir darya flow through this plain and both of them fall into the aral sea so remember two rivers the sir darya sir is always on the top and amudarya over here so both these rivers form the turan plain and they are known for being an inland drainage system and they lie to the south of the west siberian plain now let us come to the central mountain zone now this central mountain zone there are vast areas which consists of high mountain ranges and they are all newly formed folded mountains they are known for being very high and so they are known as young fold mountains so to the north of india here you can see the pamir knot now this pamir knot is a point from where mountains begin to move either towards the west or towards the east so this knot is the nodal point from where mountains are originating in all directions the ranges to the east includes the tian shan the kunlun the karakoram and the mighty himalayas the ranges which move towards the west includes the hindu kush over here and the suleman range over here the himalayas which is found in the northern part of india continues as arakan yoma and pegu yoma in the south so the himalayas move like this in a concave shape and then begin to move towards the south to the west of the pami knot we have the hindu kush the suleman the zagros over here north of the persian gulf here we have the elbers mountain which is found to the south of the caspian sea between the caspian sea and black sea we have the caucasus range and the pontic range lies to the south of black sea and taurus is found to the south of the country of turkey now these mountain ranges have got several high peaks which can be nearly 8000 or more than that 8000 meters above the sea level we all are familiar with mount everest which is having a height of 8848 meters there are several such peaks which are having a height of more than 8000 meters here you can see a few of the peaks which are lying on the himalayas which includes the kanchenjunga 
the Nanda Devi, Mount Ketu in, in the Karakoram range, all are very, very high and are considered the highest, one of the highest peaks of the world. Now, there are several inter-montane plateaus in, this, in these mountains. Now, what are inter-montane plateaus? Inter-montane plateaus are those plateaus which are enclosed in between two mountain ranges. This is the picture of the Tibetan plateau, which is encircled by the Kunlungs and the Himalayas and is nearly 4,000 meters above the sea level. No wonder it is known as the roof of the world. Elsewhere we find the Mongolian plateau, the plateau of Iran, the plateau of Anatolia, all are the intermontane plateaus which are found in the central mountain system. Now there are several plateaus which are found in the southern part of Asia. One among them is the Deccan Plateau which is found in the southern part of India and is highly dissected by rivers. The Plateau of Shan and Yunnan you can see over here where we have countries like Myanmar, Laos, Thailand, parts of China. So this brown color indicates a plateau region and this plateau region is known as the Shan and Yunnan Plateau. This plateau is also highly dissected by several rivers about which I will speak a little later. Then we have the Arabian Desert. The Arabian Desert is a, an area which lies in a plateau region. And this entire region, this entire brown color which you see, indicates a plateau. And the Arabian Desert lies in this plateau region. Apart from the mountains, the lowlands, and the plateau regions, we have a very important feature and that is the alluvial plains. Now these alluvial plains have been made by several rivers which have been flowing over here since millions of years. The Indo-Gangetic Plain is one of the most important which is being formed by the rivers like Ganga, Brahmaputra and Indus. Now these areas are also one of the highest populated areas of the region because of availability of water, fertile soil and a favorable climate have made many people to dwell over here since thousands of years. These are also areas of rich civilization. In China, the eastern part has got a lot of fertile plains, mainly because of the rivers like Wanghe, Yangtze, the Sikian. All these bring a lot of silt and fertile soil and deposit them over here. So most of the population of China is concentrated in this eastern part of the country. The rest of the country, especially the western part, is mainly dry, has a very hostile climate, mountainous, 
so the population is also very sparse. In Western Asia, the plains which have been formed by the river Tigris and Euphrates has been a very important civilization. The Mesopotamian civilization has had been having contacts with the civilization of Indus Valley. So artifacts, seals, and several other things have been found in both the places of the same type of nature. So this says a lot about trade, which must have been taking place between the Indus Valley and the Mesopotamian civilization nearly 3,000 years ago. Here we also have cities like Jericho, Kattelhjörg, which are one of the oldest cities of the world. Elsewhere we find the islands. Now the islands over here have been formed mainly because of they being either a part of volcanic islands or they have been a part of the islands which have been formed due to volcanicity around the Pacific Ocean. So many of them are the peaks of old mountain ranges or they are formed due to the volcanicity over here. And these islands are mainly scattered in the eastern and southeastern part of Asia. They are a part, they form a part of the ring of fire, which means a chain of mountains which are surrounding the Pacific Ocean and most of them have been formed mainly due to the volcanic origin of the area. Many of the islands form nations like Japan, Philippines, then parts of the Malayan archipelago, which I have already talked about in the first part, that they are groups of islands. So in this module, we have learned about the different and physical features of Asia. I hope you all must have understood what are the five different physical features of Asia. There are many more things to learn in the subject and the topic which we will be learning in the next few weeks. So that is what we have enough time for today. Thank you.